What's up, everybody, and welcome to Simple Man's Comics. I'm your host, Brian Wood, and this is the Thursday Night Bolo Show. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo himself. What's going on, buddy? Excited, Brian. Been tracking these new comic book day sales all day. We just got done watching the premiere of the Hot and Cold Show right here on Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel. And now I am ready to talk about these new releases for the CBSI Bolo Show. Right, so it is important to know that this show is not live, it is pre-recorded, but we are premiering it as we always do, so that we can participate in the live chat with you, the viewer. And if you're watching this on replay, thank you so much. We hope you enjoy the show each and every week, bringing you the Bolo Show. Be on the lookout is what Bolo stands for. It's the list that covers first appearances, reader buzz, and variant buzz. But before we get into that, it is important to note that not only is this available on video, but we also have an audio version through the CBSI Bolo podcast. That's right, we have this available on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. So if you don't want to watch this, if you want to enjoy the audio version on your commute, while you're working out, while you're doing whatever, drowning out those kids as they're arguing over each other, you can listen to us right from your headphones, wireless earplugs, however you want to do it, but we are available in a podcast version. In addition to that, it is important to know that this show is sponsored from SlabbedHeroes.com. Nick Dwortman at SlabbedHeroes.com. If you're looking for modern comics at a graded 9.8 guaranteed, make sure you check out Nick at SlabbedHeroes.com. As well as those hard-to-find raw copies, he keeps those in stock as well. But, Jack, like you said, we just got done watching the premiere of The Hot and Cold. It's been a busy week. New comic book day is today, the day that we're recording this Bolo show. So everything we talk about is as of release day today. Now tomorrow, while you're watching this, it is a day after release day. So we hope market changes day after day. But we're going to cover what's been hot, right? Yeah, right. What What is hot, what's moving already, and what you guys are talking about on social media uh, through all the various CBSI and Simplements Comics platforms. But before we get into this week's list... We are going to go and recap a couple comics from last week's list. These are the heavy movers, and we're talking about, of course, the first on the rewind is Powers of X number two. Well, I'm laughing already, Brian, because this is the book that got us started talking about the myth of Pump and Dump. And uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to watch last week's episode um, and you just want to see what I'm talking about there... Brian's got the great micro content video up on the channel. It's also up on our Instagram. Um, But this was the book that got that conversation going because in our Facebook group, people were saying the discussion of this being a $15 book was a pump and dump, that it wasn't, that wasn't legitimate. Well, guess what, Brian? It's a $15 book. And uh, and I think to anybody who um, has any experience in the market, this wasn't a surprise. Um, This is a red hot reader buzz series. Brian, you and I know we've been talking about this for over a year now. Reader Buzz is driving secondary market sales right now. And, um, you know, issue number two tends to be ordered in, you know, a small quantity in comparison to issue number one. So this was kind of to be expected. We saw this one coming. We tried to talk to people about this on release date last week. They didn't want to listen. Um, It got me kind of fired up to jump on the mic here last last week and uh, talk about. Just a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. We got a little bolo rant on uh, the discussion of um, what constitutes a pump and dump versus what doesn't. It's funny, even when you put that video out there, people still want to argue it. But you know, I'll, I'll let uh, I'll let the record stand for itself. And the reality is, again, this is a fifteen dollar book, so this is a book that people want. Um, people are willing to pay the almost three times cover for. And um, again, I think House of X, Powers of X, anything Jonathan Hickman's doing X related right now is on fire. Right, and then in addition to recapping last week's books, another hot book is Once in Future number one. Right, this is another book we got fired up to talk about because this was a book we tried to put the community on early. A lot of you guys listened, um, and a lot of people may not have. <coughs> Excuse me. This is, it's choking me up to even discuss <laughs> this book. But, uh, yeah, this is a book also that we caught some flack for talking about pre-FOC. Let us know in the chat how you guys feel about pre-FOC speculation. Well, I'd love to hear that. Um, some other speculators don't like it, but that tends to come from a kind of a um, 
selfish perspective. I want to know how does our audience feel about pre-FOC um, speculation. But this book, cover A, we'll talk about first, has dropped a bit. It's down to about you know eight plus shipping. You're looking at about twelve dollars shipped. But that is kind of to be expected. Um, Brian made a great, great point during the Hot and Cold show where he talked about the geographic nature of independent comics. That's something I don't think I had really thought about until he made that comment. But I live in South Carolina. Finding these books weren't very easy for me at local shops in, in South and North Carolina. Those of you in larger cities, we had a commenter on our Instagram say that he found two-thirds of a diamond box sitting at one of his LCSs. And for that reason, he believed that this book would be cold. And I just think that that is just the differing perspectives you get geographically because I can't find that book in my area. It's an easy seller in my area. So I would say to that guy, you should be buying those up. But his perception is uh, he should leave those alone because they're easily available. So it just kind of depends on the LCSs you have access to within your area. So I think that this is a solid book. I think it's only going to go up from where it's at now. Um, spec cycle, it may take a little bit of a dip for a period of time, but this is a winner. They just announced the fifth print today. Fifth print, Brian. Amazing cover art as well. Um, so I, this one is, is absolutely rock solid. Um, the thank you variant is still trading for 50 to $60, and the uh, San Diego Comic-Con uh, advanced issue has just been astronomical in price on the secondary market so once in future is is a hit and the biggest thing and the thing that makes me feel solid about an investment in this book is the fact that readers are loving it they're reading it and they're enjoying it brian you're a big fan of this one as well yeah i really enjoyed the story on this one i mean just classic like i said it's like part game of thrones part stop or my mom will shoot except this time it's a doobie rolling grandma but uh Great, and I really, I'm excited to see when issue, the second print comes out. I'm excited to see what happens with that because super low print one that we're told. A lot of people that ordered them got their orders allocated even when they ordered them early. That they right. got Diamond coming back to them saying, hey, you ordered this many, you're only getting this amount, but don't worry, we took the rest of your order and you're going to be getting third print or fourth print or however print they're going into right now. All right. So I think that that's, that's what's going to be interesting is a lot of times people sleep on those second prints. I think the second print could be a spur uh, in and of itself. Right. And just like we always say, all those other printings have different cover art, which is a plus for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is key to speculation is you don't just want that uh, trade color change or something like that. So we're getting original cover art and we're getting big name artists. The fifth print was just uh, announced today with uh, Kahari Rand uh, was Kari Randolph. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm going to get slayed in the chat, but um, you know, uh, who's, you know, comes from like Batman beyond and, and books, a lot of DC comics books. It's done a lot of independent work with image comics. So, you know, you're getting solid uh, name artists that maybe you wouldn't necessarily associate with this book. So like to see that and definitely, definitely excited to see what those prints do. Right, so that is going to be our rewind from last week. So we are now going to bring up this week's list. And as always, if this is your first time here or you're new to the BOLO list, like we said, BOLO stands for Be On The Lookout, not anything else. Be On The Lookout is what it stands for, which covers first appearances, reader buzz, and variant buzz. Jack creates the list. It hits social media, usually Tuesday evenings, early Wednesday morning, and then we plaster it all over social media. It's on my YouTube community. It's on the Simple Man's Comics Facebook page, which there is one if you didn't know. It's on the CBSI Facebook page, as well as CBSI's Instagram, my Instagram, Twitter, everything except MySpace and Friendster and stuff like that. But... And who knows, it may be there. We're just not the ones putting it there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there's the list as as we shared it and uh we're just gonna roll right into it right jack we good yeah 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 absolutely and again remember this is not a list that we're putting together arbitrarily of books that we feel like you should speculate on these are books that are being talked about in the community leading up to new comic book day these are the books that you guys are talking about so if there's a book you want to see on the list that you feel like wasn't on the list, you know, the key is get out there on social media and get your voice heard. Um, let us know. Reach out to us. DM. Um, you know, tag us in, in your posts. Let us know what you're speculating on for New Comic Book Day before New Comic Book Day, and you may find the book that you like on the CBSI Bolo list. Right. And it's important to know, you know, like when you're 
doing a review in school and the teacher's stomping their foot saying that's going to be on the test. We're kind of stomping our foot here to let you know because it's on the list. It's this isn't a hey checklist that if you buy all these books, you're going to make a crap ton of money. No. We're just letting you know the information that's out there from first appearance, reader buzz, and variant buzz. We've said this multiple times, yet we still get comments that saying that we're putting this on the list and telling people that you're going to get rich if you buy every single comic on here. That's not true. I'm the teacher stomping my foot right now telling <laughs> you, so quit commenting saying that we are doing that because we're telling you right now we aren't. But, right. The, re the reality is Brian and I probably buy a third of the list or less in a given week, I would say, and the third may be a high a high number. So, yes. yeah, absolutely not. Plus, to be honest, most of those people saying that don't watch the show, don't read Which, the list. They right. just like want to have something to talk about. But we're going to move right on into first appearances for the week. And what do we have, Jack? We have Captain Marvel number eight, second print. Hey, you get the second print, you get the first appearance of Star. It's a light week for first appearances. So I know some of you out there are going to say, oh, second print's not a first appearance. But you know what? The market has really stated otherwise. Um, people are trading these books for heavy money. This one reminds me of Don't Kill Me, the Camilla Khan uh, appearance. I, say, I don't say that from a dollar figure standpoint whatsoever. Because what made that, that book valuable was the fact that people didn't order it. This one, people certainly ordered it heavy. We even saw um, it get the virgin treatment from a store exclusive. But look, we talked about issue number nine. What was it, last week, Brian? Yeah. And, you know, obviously Star made some moves in that issue. So what looked like a character that we didn't know where it was going to go, and even Brian and I were on the show talking about, ah, we don't know, we don't know how we feel about this. These prices are getting ridiculous for a character that just appeared. Um, here we are just a few weeks later looking at issue number nine saying, you know, this character may be something to pay attention to. And now you get this. This is a gorgeous cover art, I, in my opinion. I think, uh, you know, it, it's a real good kind of um, solo shot of Star. And then you and I, Brian, were just talking about this right before we got on air here. You know, today was the solicitation that Mark Brooks put out for Captain Marvel number 12, and we see the the dark Captain Marvel character that they're putting out there. And uh, we know that the, the stuff with Star is going to go into the next arc. I don't know if that dark Captain Marvel is Star or if Star is going to somehow have an effect on turning uh, Carol Danvers dark. But either way, this storyline is red hot. And, um, you know, these second prints, I think, will take longer to gain value because they were so heavily ordered. But this is a solid long-term play. This was a book I considered for the long-term play of the week. This was one of three books I looked at and gave serious consideration to. What is going on with the Marvel Universe? We got Silver Surfer Black. We got Dark Captain Marvel. That's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it does seem like. And then you even throw in a Mortal Hulk there. Yeah. Where that's a darker version of Hulk. It just seems like um, when something works for Marvel, it seems like they go to that well a lot. Yeah, until it doesn't work. But Yeah, right until the wheels fall off. Yeah. It's like that football coach who runs the same play until it gets stopped. Yeah. That's uh, the Redskins against the Dolphins when they kept running counter tray for about 11 straight times. <laughs> but I digress. The glory days of the good old Redskins. <laughs> get there one day but yeah <laughs> that wraps up the first appearance section so before we get into the reader buzz section if you guys are watching this right now i know you guys are really really active in the chat but do us a favor click that thumbs up button and if this is your first time here go ahead and subscribe to this channel that way you'll get notified every time a new video is released but reader buzz first appearance section was kind of small we're gonna make up for that in the reader buzz section this week right Yes, yes. There's a lot of books that had readers heavily excited this week. And we're going to start with Pretty Violent number one. So this was had two different covers for it. Right. And a lot of people that the one that's making noise is that Otley cover B. Yeah, And it's funny because that's the one I picked up. Um, I bought both of these covers. Um, I didn't buy a lot. 
and again, we like we like transparency on this channel. So I'm I'm gonna be transparent. I, I tell you guys when there's a book that I bought into. I bought into this book, but I didn't buy a lot. I'm talking a couple of each type thing. Um, but I bought a couple more of the cover B than I did the cover A because Otley seems to have a growing fan base in the secondary market. Having said that, Brian, we've seen this time and time again when a book gets optioned. What cover do they do they seem to gravitate towards? Exactly. You know? and, and, and cover A. And I was yeah. the same way. I sat in my LCS for a good like three minutes with the Otley cover, and I kept had it in my hand. And I was staring at the rack, going, "I like the Otley cover, but I know Cover A is usually the one to." Uh, I'm, I'm buy what you like, so I picked up the Otley cover and I left the regular one on the stand. I think Cover A or Cover B, excuse me, the Otley cover does a better job kind of depicting what this series is. I mean, yeah. it's called Pretty Violent. I mean, which cover to you looks extremely violent. Um, so, and again, like I said, Otley has the name. And we're seeing already that people seem to favor on the secondary market so far the Otley cover. Now, again, it's early. It's Wednesday night. Uh, it's actually creeping into uh, Thursday morning already. Just to let you guys know how dedicated we are to the comic book fam. We are up past midnight recording this. But, um, but yeah, so um, we haven't seen say over cover price sales again it's important to note though that all these books being sold on ebay for cover price the people are also paying shipping so people are all are end up i've mentioned that multiple weeks in a row because i want you guys to understand that when books are selling for cover price they're actually selling for like eight to ten bucks which means that people want these books so you know people are willing to buy this book um and brian had mentioned to me that the, you know they're starting to see listings of ten dollars so It'll be interesting to see by the time this show airs, do some of these ten dollar sales end up um, end up being purchased, and will this book trend that way? But yeah, people seem to like the Otley book long term. If this is say adapted in some way, will they go with cover A? I don't know. That that's certainly something that's plausible. Uh, I bought this book because from the solicitation, I said, man, you know what? With what these female driven storylines it reminds me of hit girl like an r-rated hit girl so i was like i could see netflix doing that and you know how i feel about netflix speculation so that was kind of my thought what again it wasn't enough to go super heavy on but um i grabbed a few copies of each right it's also important to kind of an observation per se is if they're buying it off ebay for cover price plus shipping that's like one book that they're paying for shipping. So it probably tells you wherever they're going to look for where they normally buy it online at those bigger store, Midtown, TFAW. I'm not saying it's sold out there because I haven't looked I got it from an LCS. But if they're buying it on eBay, it kind of tells you normally they would buy from Midtown and they would buy more than just one copy of something and buy multiple to make up for that shipping. But here they're buying a single issue and paying for shipping. So it tells you that they really want that book or they were just too naive to check other places. Right. Or it's against that geographical independent comics issue that we talk about where, you know, um, it, you know you're in some area. You, you said you went into, you know, you shop at Third Eye Comics, which is one of the larger kind of chain brands um, in the country. Um, but down here in South Carolina, you know, books like this, they're only getting ordered five, you know, six copies type thing. So if you're not one of the first people in the door, if you're not like Mel V waiting outside of Midtown Comics at five o'clock in the morning, you might not get that hot independent release. And it's one thing to be an image release, but we're going to talk about some releases uh, coming up next that are even tougher to get in, in an area like where I live. Right. I was at the Third Eye today, and I was looked, and I couldn't find it, and I'm sitting there checking out, and the guy, Sean, that works at the counter came up, and I guess someone had called and asked for it, and he had two copies of House of X number two. And I was like, where were those? He's like, they were on the shelf. And I was like, man, I was looking. He's like, and she's like, oh, do the other girl Ashley Workins like, do we have more? And she's like, no, these are it. And I was like, man. He's like, I can call in Annapolis for you, and we can bring some down if they have some. And I was like, I'm good, man. If, if I missed out, I missed out. I don't need them that bad. <laughs> but that's great customer service, though. From and you've you've brought that up on the show a few times. That's why you know, shout out to Third Eye Comics, who you know I've ordered from online. But uh, I know Brian shops at the store regularly, but that's just good customer service. So we've talked about some of the bad retail traits we see in the market. You also got to shout out the good ones. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about Third Eye, especially the owner, Steve. They always, you email them, they always do what they can to try to hook you up. But So after 
pretty violent next on the reader buzz. We're going to get into some of those indie books again, and we have Dead End Kids number two. Now, this one surprises a little bit, Brian. Now, not from a reader buzz standpoint. I totally expect to see this as a reader buzz. Now, we talked about Dead End Kids seeming like a book. I, I feel like we overuse this, but made for adaption. Um, you read it and you're like, even just a solicitation, you go, okay, well, this is like a Stranger Things type, um, Stand By Me type. Um, but issue number two is tearing up the secondary market sales-wise. There are several, several sales. I mean, I'm talking about uh, 8 to 10 to 12 that I just saw within the last day of $20 or more. Um, that throws me off because you don't usually see that for issue number two. Issue number one seems to be increasing in value. So I think SourcePoint Press and Frank Gogol have a hit on their hands with this one. Um, it'll be interesting to see what issue number three does. I read issue number one. I enjoyed it. Haven't read issue number two yet. Let us know in the chat if you guys read it. But it's, this is one of those books where it's really interesting because a lot of people reported, and this is where I said we're going to talk about the geographical nature of independent comics. A lot of people reported with issue number one, they couldn't get their hands on this book. That they went to their store and, you know, again, stores just aren't ordering source point press heavy like that. Um, and then we know that, again, we talked about this literally on the Hot and Cold show last night. The reality of the situation is stores tend to drop orders from issue one to issue two by as much as 50%. So when you start looking at that, it's like, how hard is this going to be to find? But when you see an issue like this doing $20, man, that's just – that's straight reader buzz. That means people want to read this book so bad they're willing to drop that money to get their hands on a copy. Because then you could wait for the trade. You know what I mean? Like Brian and I are trade readers. We're not the type of guys who are going to drop $20 on a book just to read. But I don't begrudge anybody who wants to read it that bad. It gives you a good idea of what this series is doing. And Brian, I don't know how you feel about it, but when I see that and I go, man, people are willing to, in a way, overpay for issue number two, it makes me feel like issue number one is an even more solid investment because that's how much people love this series. I agree. And then I also wonder how much of it is straight FOMO where they're seeing something going for 20 and they see uh, that, well, if it's going for 20 now, how much is it going to end up going for? So I'll pay the 20 now and then and then I'll make my money back on it. More so where they're trying to flip it when the, really it's kind of gone. To me, $20 is too high to buy in, especially if, just for flipping. I, with that being said, I do enjoy, I haven't read number two yet. I actually really enjoyed issue number one. So I'll hopefully get my hands on number two. If not, like you said, we'll wait for the trade or try to find it digitally somehow. But Frank Gogol, great guy. Really, really, really interactive on social media. Uh, yes. So we're working on getting him on the channel. So. Yeah, and for readers out there, um, I, we posted this on the CBSI Instagram. Uh, the second print is coming. So if, you know, I... I it looks like they didn't really change the cover art, which obviously we know from a speculation perspective doesn't do a whole lot. But for you readers out there who maybe don't want to pay that 20 30 or more, I've even seen sales as high as 40 on um, issue number one, that's a great opportunity to pick up that second print. Hopefully LCS is out there, ordered copies for their readers. Um, I, I would like to see that, but... Let us know. Let us know what you what you guys think about Dead End Kids for sure. All right, and another one right out of Source Point Press, another indie book that's really hot right now, and that's The Love She Offered, right? Right, and here's the weird thing about this book. This one, I, I don't know the, the sales numbers. You know, we're not privy to that, especially this early in the game. You don't see a lot of these copies available on eBay. Um, there, you know, you look at it, see, see some, some, some jerk out there will mention in the comment section and go, oh, you guys are making this book seem hot and there's only three sales. Yeah, there's only three sales, but there's only four listed. So it's like, you know, it's one of those things where there's three sales. They're all like 13 to $15, which is obviously well over cover price. And there's only four listed. What does that mean? Are we, do we, is this a book where, um, and again, by the time this show airs, maybe there'll be more listed, but. It's odd for a, a independent release to be kind of this scarce. Andy Tomberlin schooled me to something. He said that the title is throwing people off. 
the love she offered. It makes it almost seem like it's a romance book. It is not. <laughs> like a soap opera. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's a good point. And I think that was kind of by design. And even when you look at the, the font of the trade dress, it, it kind of gives you a feeling that this book is one type of book. But then just look at the imagery on the, on the um, cover right there. Um, again, this is like a murder mystery type story. So I don't know. This is this one is interesting. Issue number one caught me off guard. I was definitely prepared and waiting to see what issue number two would do. But just like um, Dead End Kids, it's surprising me to see a book going like three times cover price. Yeah. Then with those two indie books, this was another indie book that was brought up a lot this week. And we're talking about that psycho list from Black Box Comics, right? Right. I, I wasn't expecting this one. I, I started to see people talk about this book. Um, and, you know, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how that one goes. Um, Black Box Comics, I believe. Are they the ones who made that book, The Militia, that came out a few weeks back? Uh, I can't. I'm trying to. I think it was a Chuck Dixon book, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just not really familiar with the publisher. I believe they did make that book, The Militia, which didn't really do much. But um, you see a lot of these indie publishers popping up more and more, which is great. Publish comics. Pub Self-publish. Put books out. Um, it's the way to go. We get a lot of people reaching out to us saying two things like, uh, you know, how do I get in the comics game? And look at what Donny Cates is going through right now. You can't pitch Marvel, DC, IDW, even smaller publishers like Mad Cave Stories. Because if they don't go with it and then they go to a story that's similar 10 years down the line, you're going to sue them. So the best way to do it is publish books. And I, so I love seeing small publishers pop up. I don't want anyone to at all think that I am downing this publisher because I'm not really familiar with it. That's not the case. Just from a speculator perspective, I get skeptical investing in some of those early releases because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, remember like Black Mask Comics. There was a time when that – that publisher was putting hit after hit after hit and it's now seemed to just disappeared. So it's one of those things where I tend to give uh, it a wait and see approach. But yeah, this book is selling for what, Brian, like 17 to $20. Yes. Um, earlier in the week, I think there was what a listing for, or listing or sale for like 50, right? They were talking about right. it was making the rounds. And right now they're selling for about 12 to $17 listing for a little bit higher. I like the cover on this. I mean, it's got that skull cover. Kind of somewhat resembles that, like, Punch 12. You know, the big old skull on it. The, kind of the darker cover. But uh, I wasn't able to get a copy of it. Uh, I knew they were available on Black Box's comic site for cover. But I held off on ordering them just because, one, I didn't know how Black Box ships. Yep. So I've... I've I will tell you, I, I know how Archie ships, and if you ever want a hot Archie comic, don't buy from them. That's, but, that is so true. <laughs> but yeah, Black Box, it was on there. I, word spread quick, man. They sold out in like a day or two. But it, for, if you guys watching this or in your, in the live chat right now and you read this book, let us know what you thought of it. And do you think it'll keep going up or do you think this will drop off? Yeah, and I uh, just looked up. They are the ones who published that Chuck Dixon um, gotcha. mil militia book. So, um, yeah, I, I knew I had familiar with them somewhere. But like, this one, I got to say shout-out to Andy Tomlin from the Indie Spotlight Series. Uh, you guys got to be reading that on comicbookinvest.com because he was all over this book. And, he, and follow him on Instagram because he was putting out posts days and days before this book came out. But this is another one where I think a lot of LCSs probably didn't even order it. Right. So the next book on the reader list, we're going to go Absolute Carnage vs. Deadpool. I've heard mixed opinions on this. So don't, I mean, it came out today. I haven't had a chance to read it. I've heard some people really like it, and I've heard some people that were kind of just meant over it. But if I was to read any tie-ins, usually Carnage and Deadpool seems like something that, that I, I got a copy, but I haven't read it yet. And now yeah, I'm hearing people. It's like when you a new movie comes out and you start hearing bad reviews. You're like, man. Yeah. But... I, can't, I still can't wait to read this. So, yeah, that's the thing is, like, uh, I've said this before on the channel, man. I don't know if I've ever been so excited reading a comic as I was reading Absolute Carnage. I loved that book. And we talked about how both Brian and I, we have the same kind of reading philosophy, right? We're not going to, like, 
we don't need to read every book every week. Um, we read what kind of interests us. We read what we feel like we need to to talk about it on the channel. But we're both kind of guys who, who are patient and willing to wait for that trade. Um, I read Absolute Carnage and I said, oh, no, not this one. I need to read it all. And um, I read the tie-in, Separation Anxiety, and um, and uh, Scream. I enjoyed both of those. That maybe it was a little bit of like leftover uh, residual excitement from Absolute Carnage. But yeah, I was really excited for this one. I have not read it yet. But I, Brian, I 100% agree with your assessment because I've heard nothing but negativity um, from readers about this one. Um, you know what cover I'm excited for, Brian? Which that Rob Liefeld cover. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's one I ordered. Um, the uh, I mean, the incentive isn't doing well. Don't expect to see that show up on the uh, the Hot 10 the way the Separation Anxiety Clayton Crane did. Um, I, I'm interested. I know I'm going to get killed for this, but I'm interested to see if the um, Liefeld connecting covers do anything. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Connecting covers, you know, that's something maybe for the Hot and Cold show because these House of X, Powers of X connecting covers have been popular. We've seen connecting covers become increasingly popular in the market. There was a time when they were being overdone. Right. But um, they've, they've become more and more popular of late. And um, I think that there's a larger focus on art. Having said that, obviously, Rob Liefeld, people either love him or hate him. Um, but that's that's the cover I'm I'm excited for. Either way, this is a this is one I'm ready to read. And look, you're getting like 27 books in the Absolute Carnage like run in total. They're not all going to be good. Yeah, that's just reality. If Donny Cates was writing them all, they would be. But but you know they're not all going to be good. But it's still it's worth a read to stay up on it. I feel like if I get enough information that I feel more kind of educated going in the next absolute carnage book than i've gotten what i paid for right so we're gonna roll into the next one and this is probably the most talked about book late in the week like monday night leading into new comic book day and we're talking about batman number 77 and we're gonna have a nice little conversation about this book right now now when i did weekly picks this is one of my picks mostly because i love the cover a on batman 77 with Gotham Girl or New Robin, whatever you want to call her. Love that cover on there. Clayton Crane did the B cover, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. So I actually enjoyed the cover A better on this, which is kind of different for me. A lot of times I side with the cover Bs. And I've... The beginning of this Bane, Tom King run, I was kind of like, man, I don't... had a hard time kind of following it, but it's gotten better. And then, of course, news started breaking, which... Spoiler alert, right? We're going to talk about it. Um, right, yeah. I think they want to hear it. Yeah. But, and I think they know anyway. Yeah. I mean, everyone's kind of knows the pictures are going everywhere. But we see what looks to be like Alfred getting his neck snapped by Bane. But, uh, all right. This is one of the books that I was able to read today. I love this issue because Damien's just a badass in it. I mean, he's going up to, he's pretty much telling, you know, uh, Flashpoint Batman, I'm here to kick your ass. But then he gets taken hostage. He loses the battle and gets taken hostage, right? And they... Next thing you know, he kind of comes to and then Bane snacks out Alfred's neck. And then he's like, now we have you as a hostage. That's even better, right? But I don't see Alfred dying is causing this book to sell for $20. Um, we're seeing sets for, what, $40? Uh, it's just crazy all over a dead butler, and, I don't know. You what know, what do you ahead, think? Brian. I'm just going to uh, say, what do you think? You know I don't like this book. Yeah. Now, again, did I enjoy reading it? Absolutely. I'm one of the few that – I'm a huge Tom King fan. Um, I think I get affected by the fact that – I met Tom King when he was, like, just getting into comics. He Everybody talks about his Mr. Miracle run. Everybody talks about – Vision. Um, Vision. What I love is Grayson. Yeah, I, I I love that series. I think that series is ready made for a movie. If DC wanted to do an Elseworlds movie that would give them, say, a version of 007, I would love to see Tom King write a great a Grayson movie. I, I just I, I'm a big fan of. That. I'm also a big fan of Tom King the guy. I mean, you're talking about an ex CIA operative. Like the dude is legit. 
Um, and it's kind of cool the way he's ascended in comics. And I've liked his Batman run. I know a lot of people haven't. But I also think you got to let art play itself out, and they rushed him at the end. So you are, people are always going to judge it kind of incorrectly. I've enjoyed this Bane storyline. I agree with you about cover A. I think Thomas Wayne has been a kick-ass Batman. I, I've enjoyed getting the, the Flashpoint Batman. I think Gotham Girl as his sidekick gives a lot of speculation. Uh, obviously, we talked about Batman 75 for the long-term play of the week a couple months back. Um, Clayton Crane has a lot of fans, but I agree with you. This is not my favorite Clayton Crane cover. Um, so I tend to side more with cover A, but, but then let's get to like the main event. Can I just say the, the Clayton Crane cover B to me looks almost like a Lego Batman cover. You know what? I would have never thought that, but I see that. I see that with you saying it. It's almost too smooth, right? Yeah. Like Batman's a little more scruff and gruff yeah where the cover a to me like the art is gorgeous it cut i mean i like tony s daniel but to me it also resembles almost like those david finch covers that we're used to seeing with batman also with the posing the arts the line art um yeah the cover a i was definitely drawn to that plus if last month's del Otto cover he doesn't do anything yeah. nothing will do anything that del Otto cover uh for what was it 76 yeah I mean, that thing went so under the radar. I, we had that on the list, right? Yeah. I got that thing in hand. Oh, my God. That's I I, it's like I almost put sent you a picture. Like, Brian, did you get this book? Like, this is the most out-of-bounds awesome Batman cover I think I might have bought in years. Um, it did nothing. So, you know, I, I if that didn't do anything, I wouldn't think this is. Yeah. And then, again, I like cover A for the speculation back with Gotham Girl. I think um, – it, you have a better chance for that to pop. But that's not what anybody cares about, right? do they, Brian? No, dead they, butler. Yeah, it's all about the dead butler. Who? Um, I could see them killing him off. He's old. You, know, you keep it real, right? He's been around for a while. It's a little odd since his TV show just debuted on Epics. So you got to ask yourself, is that something they would really want to do? But you know what? It's not even about that. First off, let's say he's dead. Brian and I are speculators who have been talking speculation online with cbsi for like i feel like i say the same year total but i, I mean i could even be off by a couple of years but like eight years right brad yeah. yeah and we have seen death issues rapidly um it's a go-to kind of um it's a shocking thing that tends to sell issues right and especially these deaths that happen at the end of books um because it makes readers want to read that next book um, rarely, if ever, can you name me any death issue ever that has stood the test of time as a major key? Um, you maybe. know, I mean, Gwen Stacy, maybe, but then Spider Gwen almost yeah. hurts that. Um, it's certainly a major key within like readers of Spider Man, but. I would argue that more people talk about Spider Gwen than talk about the death of Gwen Stacy. I would say maybe the Crisis on Infinite Earth books, but obviously they undid those. Yeah. I, they still get sold though, like that death of Barry Allen. And I, I'll also say this is way off topic, but Bolo on that death of Barry Allen, Crisis of Infinite Earths book, because there's a solid chance that that book's going to get popular with the upcoming Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, I imagine Stephen Amell and Green Arrow is going to take the place of um, of Barry in that situation. But I, I still think that that book has a chance of heating up. But we're talking about Alfred here. Um, you know what book this really reminds me of, Brian? Splinter? I don't know. You, you know what? That's a good one. That's a good one because that's another fake out death. Batman 40 from the oh. New 52. We've talked about that on this channel, right? Yeah. Because... At the time, one of the most influential people, no, the most influential person in CBSI, got the spoilers for Batman 40 and put them out there, right? And we were all jumping on that book. Me, I was a little newer in the game at that time. Had a little money in my pocket. So I said, man, you know what I'm going to do? 100 copies. <laughs> Cover price. You know I'm what I mean? put my kids' kids through school. Right, and just like this book, they were selling for $20 when they came out. 
But you know what I learned? You can't sell a hundred books before the market crashes. And I don't care how popular this is, the market's gonna crash because we're already seeing it. Those prices you mentioned, if you look right now, I'm seeing $13 and $18 sales already. It's already starting to drop. And that's just due to the fact that Batman is not dead end kids. It's not the love she offered. Everybody orders Batman. I don't care where you are in the country. Your LCS ordered Batman. Um, so it wasn't crazy to get your hands on. It was a little tougher to get your hands on maybe because your store limited one per customer. We heard a lot of that. Because it was a $25 book, the night before release, once spoilers got out, um, a lot of uh, spec websites and things like that put that, that image out. You know, LCSs tend to get these books on Tuesdays, so that it's po you know it's possible for that stuff to leak out on Tuesday, and it, it does happen, and it it causes a rush into the LCS. But in Batman Forty, if you didn't read the New Fifty Two run, you believed in that issue that the Joker had died. Not only that, you thought it was possible Bruce Wayne did, and we all kind of were like. This is going to change Batman mythos. And what is going to happen? Well, now we know there's three Jokers. <laughs> and nothing that happened in that issue stuck. And it was all just a tease lead into the next issue. They came out with three printings of that book before the next issue came and undid everything that Batman 40 had done. Um, and to this day, I probably still have 65 to 70 copies of that book. No bullshit. Um I still like the mask variant. There's a Joker mask homage cover. I still like that as like maybe a book that'll rebound one day, um, especially with the mask coming back from Dark Horse Comics. Um, but I learned my lesson there. So yeah, would I grab these at the shelf for cover price and flip them um, for the 25? Yeah, I would do that like in a heartbeat. But I mean literally a heartbeat. If you have this book... We get those posts, Brian, you and I were talking about this earlier today. We get those posts on Facebook. Oh, is this a, a, a buy, hold, or sell? This is not a, a hold. It's a read. <laughs> yeah. Definitely read it, but then flip that sucker on eBay right now while you can get your money for it. Yeah. Even Bleeding Cool put out an article saying this is a $4 book, not a $25 book. So, you know, and I, I have almost zero respect for them as a speculation news source. Um and, you know, it just, I understand and I love our new followers, our new viewers, our new subscribers. Brian and I have talked about this since, you know, we really teamed up on this channel. The new people are being misled quite often. They're not getting, um, they're not getting the information that they need. They're getting kind of pushed in certain directions. And look, could Brian and I be wrong about this? It's possible. You know, it's possible Alfred's dead for good. And it's possible, I guess, that this is some key important thing, but it's highly unlikely. It's highly unlikely this is more than an $8 book at most a month from now. Right. So, you know, with that being said, as Brian likes to say, I, I would say exercise extreme caution. Please avoid FOMO. Don't go spend the, the crazy money that apparently some people are doing for this book. Um, you know, it, this book is out there. You can find this book. There's probably going to be 100,000 of this book printed. And regardless of that, I agree with what Brian said about Alfred. He's a butler. It's going to be just a – if he's dead, it's a tool to do something to Damien, to make Damien maybe more like the way Batman lost his father. Um, and because, again, we're talking about a future storyline – we can still go back into the comics and, and see Alfred in the comics. We can still see, um, you know, this could be undone. Brian, you mentioned uh, to me when we were originally talking about this, you know, who's to say Damien wasn't drugged? Yeah. Who's to say it wasn't a dream? Um, we don't know any of those things. And here's the other thing. Alfred in Batman Beyond is like a computer program. So it's not like he really ever goes anywhere. So that hurts the ability for this to be any sort of final death that brings any money. So if you got them, flip them. 
or you know hold your reader copy uh put it with your batman run but do not expect this to be an investable book long term let us know in the comments of course i know you will if you utterly disagree with us but i assume you guys come here unless you're hate watching um you come here to get brad and i's advice as two speculation ogs and that's our advice is this this book is one to be careful for this is the book that worries me the most for you new speculators yeah and i heard in the last panel that nova shows up so there's that <laughs> yeah see and another reason why you gotta watch out you new guys uh don't jump on every everything you hear and every alert you see because sometimes a joke is a joke but yeah, Batman seventy seven. It was still a great issue. I really enjoyed reading. Oh it. yeah, but um, this again, this whole run, I feel like this whole yeah. Bane storyline from 75, 76, 77 have been great. Yeah, they solicited it as we'll change Batman as we know it forever, right? So right. I don't know if that has with Alfred being. Out. I don't know, but we're just gonna move on. I think we've we've talked about that enough. So we're gonna go on to the next one, and we're gonna talk about Canto number three. David Brewer, Drew Zucker, great guys. As you, if you've watched this channel, you know Jack and I both love this title. But Canto number three is out. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, looks like the one in ten. Looks like they're doing about cover and ratio, right? I think twelve dollar sales I've seen maybe for Canto. Um, yeah, it's pre-release was up to about twenty five. Right. Seems like now that people have it in their hands. You're seeing like that twelve dollars, but again plus shipping, yeah. so you're getting about seventeen, um, which is important to notice because again it's it's a it's a one in ten variant, so it's still above ratio. But you know what the thing is, Brian? This was the first book post Canto number one coming out that people were able to get their hands on. So number two, you had to have those orders in before number one came out. So LCS has looked like they caught up to they caught up to this one. They started to see the buzz of Canto. Um, you know, we, we're going to talk later about two other late printings that got released today. So this was a great opportunity for you guys. If you had slept on Canto, if you didn't believe us, again, another Indie Spotlight Series episode under viewed. Please go back and watch that episode. David Boer and Drew Zucker, they give you so much game. They talk about variants that still haven't been released yet, guys. Yeah. They, they talk about covers that still we still haven't gotten to yet. Um, they talk about seven seasons in a movie. Seven seasons in a movie, my favorite hashtag to uh, hit those guys with. <laughs> um, again, and that we joke about that, but that's where these guys are thinking. These are two guys who have other jobs who want to make comics their full-time job. Yeah. And, and, and to do that, they're putting their all into this book. I love that. I invest, I'm happy to invest in that. And it's the same way I talked about Tom King. When I meet people, especially early in their careers – and they have that kind of passion. I interviewed Donny Cates when people didn't know him, uh, when he was just starting to get hot. And I hit it off with him. And same, I talked about Tom King. That's how I feel about these guys. I really feel like these guys could, could make it in this industry in a way. I think Canto is a great book. I haven't gotten a chance to read issue number three. I can't wait, though. Um, the one in ten incentive. If I, if I was ever going to say something negative about Canto, it's probably my least favorite cover they've released. But, you know, I, this is where I'll, I'll bring up. There are some low print store exclusives that just got released. With the third print, IDW went ahead and you know what they said? We're going to help these guys out. We're going to go ahead and cash in on this sucker. And they let uh, stores do exclusives for Canto number one. Uh, with that third printing and we saw like some low print ones like frankie's comics 300 copies uh for their for their virgin exclusive um gorgeous limited cover. gorgeous cover um i i can't i'm not even gonna try to pronounce the artist but he he, t he mentioned on his instagram it was his first u.s comic that he was doing so i thought that was pretty cool um but yeah so you get a chance to see some there's some nice variant covers out there um so if you're a canto fan like myself i'm checking all of these uh store exclusives um yeah, the frankie's one is my favorite um for sure but you know we'll we'll talk more about that later but you know it's it's one of those things where i, I definitely think 
that Canto is making a mark in the market. So if you're down on this book saying, well, this book didn't do what Canto 1 and 2 did, that's just because people figured it out, man. They, they finally figured out Canto was a juggernaut. But I think it's a good long-term play. And I'm, gonna, I'm using the Dan Piercy method with this one, Brian. I'm, I'm putting these together for sets. I still got my Canto number ones held back, um, my better condition copies. So I'm building some sets together. Yeah, speaking of which, that's one thing I didn't hear about this issue is I didn't hear as many print defects. Right, and I think that's because they were able to – it came out after yeah. the issue is that it happened with one. Two was already sent printer, so they couldn't do anything about it. They were able uh, – that second print for number one didn't have those issues. So I think they got this thing corrected. I think IDW got this thing turned around. Right. So going into the reader buzz, more we coming up with Transformers 84 number zero. This is a book I didn't hear a lot of people talking about, but I think, one, just the cover art on this, it just screams 1984. To, you know, it's got that 80s nostalgia, classic Transformer feel to it. I um, This was the other book where I said there was three books I considered for the long-term play. This was the other one. This is certainly not going to be a short-term play. There, there are some actually some sales on this one starting to creep towards $10. And I think that's because you're not going to see too many LCSs order this. Most LCSs like to play that 1 in 10 incentive game with IDW. There was no incentive for this book. This is the only cover. And it's Transformers number 0, and you may notice that, eight, and again, the eight, the 84 tag there. That's because it is the prequel to the Marvel number 1 that came out years and years ago in 1984, which is a year older than I am. So um, definitely uh, for us old school Transformers fans, this this is something I had to read. I had to check out. I haven't gotten my copies in yet, but I I, I had to have. Um, you know what I started to see buzz on this though, Brian. We got a little uh, upcoming. I'll tease it a little bit. Side project, a little toy endeavor uh, that Brian and I have going on behind the scenes. Uh, be a little we you know we don't like to we like to tease you on the simplements comics youtube channel we don't like to give you everything all at once so you know i'm just going to tease you a little bit with that so i've been following a lot of toy accounts recently and it was interesting to see a lot of the toy accounts post this book on instagram um and they don't post a lot of comics but this was one they saw as relevant it landed on the bolo list because I started to think to myself, well, I don't see anyone paying attention to it in the comic market, but these toy guys, these, these diehard Transformers guys want this. So I look at this, I said I considered it for the long-term play of the week um, because I really felt like this is one that I think will dry up and you won't be able to find. And I wonder if this won't be a $20, $25 book maybe a couple of years from now when people who are building those runs feel like they need to have this um, to kick off their run. So could be wrong, but I think I'm, you know, guys know I'm bullish about Transformers. That Bumblebee movie was good. It played to a younger audience, but all spark productions, the Hasbro movie company is on its way. Um, they got GI Joe movies coming. Um, Mask I think is coming. Power Rangers is now coming from Hasbro. And today Hasbro announced they got the toy license for through Sony with uh, Ghostbusters. So I think that increases the speculation on Transformers Ghostbusters crossover. They also have the Transformer Galaxies that's getting ready to launch, right? Yeah, yeah. And this book had heavy advertising for that. And I think that was part of um, the re reason for the release of this book is uh, – Transformers is really re rebooting a lot. Um, their their current run on the individual Transformers title, it's called A Bold New Era. And they're kind of going back and, and establishing the mythos a little longer. Transformers Galaxy, I think, is going to be a big, uh, big event. How do you feel about that one, Brian? I'm looking forward to it. That's one... Um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> as I clear my throat. Yeah, That's it's one... choking you up. <laughs> I know, right? That's one book that I actually ordered i won't say heavy on but i did order you know 10 copies of just because i'm looking forward to that series yeah i ordered a little more because i wanted those high ratio variants yeah. that uh came with Gal transformers galaxies so i'll go ahead and tell you guys like i said i'm transparent as can be uh transformers galaxies is one that i'm i'm cautiously optimistic about 
But next on the Reader Buzz list, we have the Hickman Saga continues, and this is Powers of X number three. He said Hickman Saga continues. All I could think is Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, is there any doubt that this this is hot? I mean, you definitely saw retailers more prepared for this. It seemed like copies were easier to get than, say, issue number two. Having said that, copies sold out at most stores. And um, are we going to talk about both covers right now, Brad? Yeah, we'll talk about it all. Talk about it all. Yeah. The super there, duper variant. <laughs> yeah, there was a secret variant for this one that came out um, where you get um, two different covers. You kind of get the uh, traditional kind of blue looking um, uh, Nightcrawler and then you get a red, the red version. I don't know what to call him. The red um, crawler. <laughs> yeah, the red crawler. Uh, and then you have magic on one cover and then you have the new character on the other cover. Um, so a lot of demand for this book, this, this became known on, um, Tuesday. Um, I want to, I want to get his name, right? Hold on one second. Infamous, uh, Jeb blug, Jeb blug wig. I don't even know. <laughs> I did so much for getting that right. That's a mouthful brother. But, uh, uh, he's active right now on Instagram as I look him up. He, he's always hitting us with that uh, early info whenever he gets it. He actually alerted me to these um, these uh, secret variants being out there. So I want to give a shout-out to him. Uh, you know who you are. I'm, I'm sure I butchered that name. And usually you'll be in our chat for the show. And uh, so shout-out to you. Um, you definitely schooled me to this one early, and I was able to get this one on the bowl list and let the community know that this book was out there and existing because that secret variant is doing like $20 right now. So it's interesting, though, Brian, you mentioned to me before the show that the solicitation actually showed the secret variant, not the actual cover A, right? Right. <clears throat> I mean, from what I saw, a lot of it was showing the secret variant because I went to Third Eye and I was like, Man, they got a lot of these secret variants here. And they come to find out that the secret variant was what they actually showed in the solicits, which was the uh, the blue face one. The red face one was the turned out to be the regular, and then the secret variant was the the blue face nightcrawler. So at the time, I didn't know which was which because I saw that thought they just had a bunch of secret variants because they had a crap load of the red face one. So I grabbed one of each just to make sure i got one but uh yeah that was interesting to me all right so I, it'll be interesting to see if anybody made that mistake when picking up these covers um but yeah always pay attention always pay attention to that um that barcode when you're looking for those variants um that can kind of tip you off a lot head to comicbookinvest.com um we've definitely had some articles on how to detect that through the barcode um use that search function on comicbookinvest.com we got five years worth of amazing articles. Um, you know, a lot of these other entities that you see, whether it's a YouTube channel or an app, um, they've been around for a year or so. They're trying to adapt to what we've been doing for years. So be sure to hit comicbookinvest.com. Use that search function. You're gonna you can get so much information. Um, I can't I can't say that enough. But yeah, another hit. Jonathan Hickman's killing it. I think people are excited for these X series. Is, It'll be interesting to see when this thing kind of spins off and it goes into the individualized X-Men teams, whether or not that heat kind of continues since it'll be spread amongst so many different series. But again, another one I'm cautiously optimistic, optimistic about. Exactly. And moving into the reader buzz, we're going to go with Strayed number one. This was that one from Dark Horse. Same, I instantly thought saga for some reason with you know with the lion cat <laughs> yeah but um this one intrigued me i like this is another one where i actually like the cover a over the cover b for it um i picked it up of course like we said well it's now thursday morning almost one o'clock thursday morning but i haven't had a chance to read this yet and i did pick it up today during new release day yeah this was one i i wasn't gonna pick up i'm a dog guy not a cat guy um this one i Again, I looked at this one. I was like, is this really something that's going to get optioned? But then, you know, my my second brain over here was telling me Netflix. Netflix, first look deal. 
Dark Horse. I got to be honest with you, I'm not a big Dark Horse comics fan. Never have been. Um, nothing personal about it. It's just that they, they haven't seemed to release a lot of uh, books that have sparked my interest. They haven't made me money. I think that's more of the thing. I haven't. Um, they haven't been a big speculation play for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I tend to kind of overlook some of the releases sometimes. But I grabbed a few copies of Cover A because at the last second, kind of FOMO style, um, looking at it like, you know, you never know. I'll put them in the indie box. I'll hold them. And uh, we'll see how this Netflix thing plays out. But I'm interested to read it because you never know. I've bought a lot of books just for, you know, speculation purposes that I end up reading and end up loving. So I'm interested when I get this one in to see, you know, whether this one uh, catches me off guard. There was another another book that just came out from Dark Horse that I actually really liked was that Berserker Unbound. I really enjoyed that story. I believe that's a mini issue, though, but um, Mike Diodato Jr. does the art in it. It's freaking phenomenal. Like I said, it reminds me of old, old school Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hercules in New York. But it's a little bit more, uh, I won't say realistic, but guys, guys book. <laughs> Where Hercules in New York was the kind of like, Yeah, kind of like Hercules in New York was more of like a comedy movie. But we're going to get into the last book on the Reader Buzz section. And this is Christ- Cristiano Ronaldo Strike Force. And uh, this book, I thought was so good that I just decided to take up the whole screen with it. <laughs> and if we were live right now, we'd be crashing the stream with this image. Yes. But I'm not going to kid you up there because I want to hear Jack's expert analysis on this book because we did some research tonight and we're not finding any sales on this, are we, Jack? Not even, not even sales. I can't even hardly find listings. Um, a lot of this came from, you know, a lot of the... the newer speculators and we you know what i won't even put this on the newer speculators we all get yeah fall victim to this a book sells out at midtown and you start going "Uh oh is this is this hot this sold out in every cover on midtown and i think we're so used to midtown ordering hundreds of copies of each our minds start saying well thousands of copies of this book sold out yeah. so this has to be hot who knows midtown could order five copies of each or this could have been bought up by foreign customers or maybe nobody bought this outside of midtown so that's why copies haven't been listed i don't really know but copies aren't listed and i hate soccer sorry i do i'm a football guy um i'm an american uh i know brian you're you're a a soccer fan but I, i hate soccer so um it's one of those things where um this does not appeal to me i will say on free comic book day i did pick up the free comic book day issue and for my kids, that was one that I grabbed them. Um, and my oldest enjoyed it. She thought it was a good book. And when I checked it out, I thought to myself, well, maybe this would make a good cartoon. You know, maybe this would be the type of thing that makes a Netflix cartoon or a um, you know a Nickelodeon type cartoon. Cristiano Ronaldo, you cannot deny the guy is huge. And there's a part of me that thought today when kind of FOMO was setting in with me when I saw it sell out, I was like, well, you know. I'm a big SEO guy, uh, so, you know, search engine optimization, and I was like, you know, I really believe that the guy's got a lot of fans out there. Maybe, maybe this will be a hot book. But then I go on eBay, I can't find any. And I'm like, what am I doing messing with soccer comics? Like, even if the, my favorite football player is Cam Newton, even if this was a Cam Newton comic, I'd be, which by the way, one does exist, I'd be like, why am I buying this? Um, so yeah, I stayed away from Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, any of our European watchers out there, because I know we get some of those, let us know. Did you Was this a book you guys saw? Was there discussion about this book? Was there demand for this book? Um, and let us know in the chat what you guys think about what was going on with Midtown being sold out of every single cover. So there's a Cam Newton comic that exists, but there's probably about as many sales as there is this Cristiano Ronaldo cover you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I I want to say DC Comics put it out. It was like a one shot or something like that. But yeah, probably just as many sales. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm a soccer fan. Um, I didn't even have this on on my my radar, but no doubt, Cristiano Ronaldo, huge international soccer star. Um, <laughs> tell me the tell him the truth, Brian. You said to me, "What is Jack thinking putting this book on the list?" <laughs> Yeah, I, I just thought I was naive to the fact. I was like, man, Jack knows something I don't. But um, <laughs> The world must yeah. either know something I don't know yeah. or mm, this was just a whiff. 
Yeah. And I definitely pushed people's buttons and put in the, the Patreon Discord because we got into the argument and I said that, that soccer was better than the NBA and it just it just caused a, a, a storm of, of conversation at that point. Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, then when you said that uh, the LeBron flopping comment, um, <laughs> you know, I'm a huge LeBron fan. Um and it set off some of the uh, LeBron over Jordan discussions. Oh, oh yeah. man. Now that we've wrapped up the reader buzz section, we're going to get into the variant buzz section for the night. And we're going to kick it off with Aftershocks, Bad Reception. This is the 1 in 10 variant, correct? Right. This is uh, Paul S. Tekka, who you may be familiar with from uh, Outcast from Image. Um, he was the one who worked with Robert Kirkman on that one. Um this one's seeing sales about thirteen to fifteen dollars. Not, you know, again, over um, ratio, but not really necessarily moving major um, major numbers. I like the concept of this book from a reader buzz perspective. It just didn't seem to have a lot of reader buzz. And again, we're talking transparency. This is a book I ordered ten copies of so that I could get one of these incentives. Um, so Def doesn't look like the greatest spec play. Um, but you know what, Brian? I don't know if you, how you feel about this, but it seems like Aftershock Comics incentives haven't really done much the last several that I've released. No, they haven't for a while. Um, should I, well, I'm going to say since like Animosity, right? And it's been a while. But, Definitely been a while. But I know Andy had uh, Aftershock 1 in 10s as a cold pick on one of the hot and cold shows a while back as well. That's true, and I need maybe I need to learn from that and uh, back off of them a bit. But you and I both commented that this the concept of this book seemed interesting. Um, it's one I'm interested to read, and uh, maybe the reader buzz will build. This was also a, a busy comic book week, so um, it seems like every week's like that. But you know, every book was fighting for attention, and when you have things like Death of Alfred, it tends to dominate that attention. Right, and. To keep us from probably getting comments, is it? I think it's Paul as a Seda, right? Not as Tekka. Probably. I have no idea. <laughs> Either I've way, met the, we're... I've met. I've met the guy, yeah. and I still have yeah. no idea how you pronounce his last name. But yeah, we're. It's no mystery. Jack and I are horrible with names, and it's no disrespect. So. Yeah, somebody said that it was. Um, we have a hard time, specifically me, I was told I had a hard time with um, people of other races. I promise you that has nothing to do with it. It just, it, you could be of any race. If if it's not, you know, a Williams, I struggle with that pronunciation. If I haven't heard it, I walked up to uh, um, Bill Senkevich at a convention years ago and called him Senkowitz. <laughs> and he, to my face, corrected corrected the pronunciation. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I started noticing him at uh, conventions. He now phonetically he has a banner that phonetically spells it out and says Senkevich. So don't take it personal, guys. I'm just terrible at pronunciation, specifically of names. Right. <laughs> I only laugh because I do the same thing and then... Like, yeah, like it spread to me. You you were the guy messing them up early, and now it's all it's all me. So next on the variant buzz list, we talked about it briefly earlier, and we have Canto. This is number one third print and number two second print, right? Right. Not doing a ton on the market. You're seeing cover price sales, but again, you're seeing cover price plus shipping um, sales going. So. It, these books are definitely in demand. I, I don't know how heavily stores ordered them. I would say if you're a retail store out there, this was your opportunity. Um, this was your a good opportunity to get loaded up on issues one, two, and three all at once and to be able to sell to readers. Um, this gave you an opportunity for $12 to get somebody to read issues one, two, and three, and then hopefully they would come back and order issues four, five, six. So – you know, I, I would hope that LCS has took advantage of that opportunity. Shout out to IDW for even presenting that opportunity. I think it was incredibly smart to time it this way. I don't know whether it was IDW who made that decision, whether it was, you know, Boer and Zucker who made that decision, but it, this was really smart the way they did this. So I hope readers got an opportunity to get these covers. I hope collectors bought them up too because I, I like the cover art change. I ordered them regardless of whether or not I thought they would be you know, heavy spec plays or not. Again, we talked about that on the Indie Spotlight Series show. We told those guys, uh, if, if you do anything, change the cover art on late printings. 
And uh, boy, have they done that and done an amazing job of that. Um, I like to see the different the different covers and the different perspectives that they've brought. But yeah, I feel like we've talked about Canto a ton on this channel. We're obviously big fans of it. Um, so if you haven't read it, this is a good opportunity to go out there and get some cover price copies and check it out. And then coming in next on the Variant Buzz section, we have Red Sonya, She-Devil. These are the Lucio Perillo variants, right? Right. So you, I think actually that um, that trade dress one is that – I think that's cover A for the book. Um, and then it got the virgin treatment. Um, Perillo is synonymous with these Dynamite releases. This is what really broke him into the uh, getting the attention of the secondary market, whether it was um, – you know, that Warlord, Son of Mars, uh, the, the John Carter books, whether it was Red Sonia, Vampirella, um, his back issue catalog of those books is deep. There's a lot of heat. Um, and these books haven't necessarily taken off yet. And I think it may just be a victim of so many of the, the cover art that gets put out for Red Sonia and Vampirella, which we're going to talk about next, is amazing. It's kind of like there's so much amazing artwork out there with, from these characters with these artists that it kind of waters it down a bit. Um, but at the same point, you know, you got to you got to be on the lookout for these because we've seen in the back issue market, they don't get printed as heavily as, say, your Marvel DC releases and they dry up. People like these books, um, you know, Adam from Strange Tales to Collect. Uh, talked about these medieval fantasy titles being popular on the Hot and Cold show. Um, and I just think that there's a lot of completionists out there who are grabbing these Perio covers. So this is one that, you know, it's not popping off yet. It's early. Like we said, it's Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So you got to wait and see how this one plays out. But this was posted a lot on Instagram. Um, these, these covers tend to get that. They have that Instagram eye appeal. Right, and I always say I'm not a huge fan of Lucio Prio, but I do love a lot of his Red Sonja work, and this is where I think he's really in his element, which is what you kind of brought up. It's kind of where where he uh, he chopped his wood and kind of made his money, so to say. Yeah. That started gaining that influence where he's doing all types of covers now, especially a lot of store exclusives. But Red Sonja, the only problem I don't like about Dynamite is it's almost... It's like the independent Marvel where they have a bunch of covers for a title. And it's something yeah. like, well, and a lot of times they're all good ones. And you're just like, I don't know which ones to get, so I'm not getting any of them. Yeah, you need to almost have one clear-cut winner for you to be able to, you know, see solid speculation on it. And then they, they do store variants for every issue. And so many of the store variants are amazing. Yeah. So then you end up competing with that. Yeah, I mean, likewise, this is going to roll into the next one on the list, and we're talking about the Vampirella number two, Art Germ and J. Scott Campbell variants. Yeah, two more, I think, amazing variants. I'm, I'm more of an Art Germ guy. Um, this has the looks like the same cover as that sneak peek variant, that one in 15 that we talked about um, with issue number one, but now you get kind of a black and white one in 50 in the, co the colored version. Um, they're doing solidly. Now the art germ ones are doing at ratio or slightly above. So that's, that's kind of good to see. J Scott doesn't quite seem to have that kind of secondary market appeal as of yet, but we know that people are always grabbing up J Scott Campbell covers. So again, it's early. Um, I think again, like we just talked about, and you can copy and paste what we just said with, with the Perio discussion here. There's just so much nice artwork released on these books that I think it gets, everything gets kind of watered down. Um, and we we're talking about like the most popular artists. There's lesser known artists who do covers for these books that they're killing these covers. So, um, it's really tough to predict these books. I think these are m not necessarily speculation plays more for those who collect either the characters or the artists i didn't buy any of these but if i had to pick one i kind of like the j scott campbell one just because i'm a huge paul green fan i love that paul green art style the j scott campbell especially for this vampirella kind of reminds me similar they come from similar backgrounds it has that like cartoon type look to it which kind of usually draws me to the covers but both of those are great and just as you said Art Germ seems to be doing better right now. Be interesting to see how these play out. Then next on the Variant Buzz list, we had Immortal Hulk number 21. This is the second print, correct? Right. This is one that kind of went 
past me a little bit. Um, sold out at most retailers. Um, you know, it's the Sorrentino second print cover. Definitely one of those artists where when you see their covers, you kind of can tell who it is because it's kind of like that synonymous style where you get kind of like that murky cover. I don't even know how to describe yeah, it. Yeah, it's like well it's just, blended. It's like blended. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think these the, the issue number 20 that they did, that, um, that sketch Alex Ross Harpy cover did well. Yeah. This one's done well. Now, all the sales that we see are price plus shipping. But there's only a few listed, and they're starting to get listed for $15 to $20. So by the time this video airs, will some of those copies sell? I don't know. It's an interesting trend. It doesn't look like a ton of these books were ordered. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you don't always get that late printing cover art pre-FOC. Sometimes you've got to take that leap of faith, and you don't know if it's going to be a reader book or a book that where the cover art can sell the book. And I think this is definitely a book where the cover art can sell the book, and I just don't know if, if retailers had that advance notice or not. Right. And I believe Sorrentino's doing the art on Gideon Falls, right? Covers and interiors, I think? Yes, so. correct. But we're going to roll on into the next pick from Variant Buzz, and this is Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Sound Off. You have some kind of interesting news about this book, though, right? This one baffles me. Um, if you guys watched us talk about issue number one, I, I said then, I said, I don't understand why this book is hot. This is just, this is how hot Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is right now. People can't wait for issue number 97 to hit shelves. They can't wait for 98. We already know so much information about those. We know in 97, Jenica is getting that bandana. We know in 98, it seems like Raph is leaving the Ninja Turtles and joining the Mutanimals. Um... But this has nothing to do with that stuff. This is based on the Nickelodeon cartoon, which has not been very successful, which, you know, my kids don't like. I don't like. They, like, I talked about how they switched up the bandana look. They switched up the dynamic between the brothers. Here in the IDW traditional main series, you have Raphael being very Raphael and seemingly quitting the Ninja Turtles um, to get kind of more militant and join the Mutanimals. And in this series, he's the leader of the group, which well, obviously wouldn't – that kind of behavior wouldn't make sense. But obviously I'm a Ninja Turtle fan, so I give you that kind of Ninja Turtle geek info. Um, this is a 1 in 10 variant. Now, I've mentioned on the channel before I like IDW offshoots of series because they tend to be small printed. I think that's the case here without a doubt. But this was a book that was available last night on Midtown for like $10 and change or $12 and change. There, it has only sold three copies on eBay, and they've sold for about eighteen to twenty dollars. But there's only two listed right now. Guess what they're listed for, Brad? What? Seventy and eighty dollars. That's freaking nuts. <laughs> and I think it's based on the fact that issue number one dried up and is now like a seventy dollar book. Um, I this is baffling to me um because the rise of the ninja turtles had a main series and it did not do well you couldn't make money on any of the incentives i think most of the incentives are still available for 10 or below um so i don't know what to say about this um maybe this is crazy reader buzz doubt it or people um, are just hey i don't see any on there i'm gonna list this as high as i think i'll get and see what i get for it True, but you know what? They got it with issue number one, so it makes me believe. It, I, I cannot wait to be in the live chat with you guys while we're all watching this show to see if either of those copies sell. I promise you on Thursday I'll be paying attention to that. Um, this one just – I shake my head at. Um, people are just dying for turtle spec. It's so funny that, when, Brian, when we started this show and I was talking turtles, people were laughing at me. Yep. You know, laughing at, at, at that spec. And now look where Turtle spec has gone. People are buying Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't get it. But you know who you know who we need to weigh in on this one? Comic Jabroni. Yes. I hope you're in the chat. Let us know, man. That's, that guy's a, a serious turtle head. Him and Paul Wiederhold of Tales from the Flipside, those are my two turtle guys. Those are the guys who let me know. Uh, you know, I, I, I pay attention to what they think. Um, but 
I, I do not like this series. And I mentioned it when we talked about issue number one. I told Kevin Eastman straight up to his face. I said, I do not. I do not like this. It's not my thing. And he kind of looked at me like, I ain't had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so, Well, the way you explained the cartoon and then the way you explained the book, it kind of seems to me like this is Nickelodeon's answer to Teen Titans Go. Yes. Yes. It, it, very much so. Yeah. Very much so. They also, um, their April character... They, they did like a race switch. It's like a young black girl. Um, so it's definitely like they redid it. It's not the same. Um, and I say April character because she's not like April O'Neil. She's a kid. She's not like a – she's not – but it's it's she plays that kind of April role with the team. And rocks like the yellow jumpsuits. But uh, yeah, it's just this is like a whole different thing. It's definitely – Teen Titans Go is a good description, but it didn't pop the way Teen Titans yeah. Go did. Gotcha. Could it could it have long term popularity? Could people get on this later? Maybe I don't know. Um, I don't see it. Maybe I'm just an old school Ninja Turtle fan, so it's you know not for me. But like I said, my kids didn't like it. My kids are big Ninja Turtles fans, and they didn't like it. It was too different for them. All right. So then, lastly, on the variant buzz section this week, we have Scout Web exclusive. Especially these are the two releases that came out this week with Headless and Planet Caravan, right? Right. Um. Uh, Brad, we've talked a lot about these Scout uh, web exclusives between the two of us. I'm cautious about how much I should say publicly, but I don't I don't know how much I love these Scout web exclusives. I like James Hake, the the CEO of um of Scout. I think I think he's a good dude. I think he's got his hand on the pulse of the market. But it's tough when you're the publisher and you're a retailer, and there has to be a level of transparency on print run. Now they, they they always have like a tiny print run, right? But at the same point, they they inflate the price up. There were the the price is like twenty dollars for these books. Yes. And, I, and it's like why? Why is it a twenty dollar book? Um, it's like they're trying to do the store exclusive game. And then if you do a store exclusive with Scout, you're competing with Scout's web store, right? I mean, you, you're both on the market trying to sell a low print limited version. Um, I don't love store exclusives on the whole. Um, I think they can be good when they're done right. It's up to the individual retailer producing them to do them right. But I think that I really don't love publishers doing them. And... We put this on the list because these. It seems like every time Scout does a wet a book that people seem to be interested in from a reader perspective, everyone goes to the Scout store exclusive. Brian, can you think about a book that you and I didn't love that seemed like other people love that everyone jumped on the Scout web store exclusive? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the problem is is I don't see too much from a speculation point of view. I don't see too much after the fact. Yes. So I, I was hitting at Gut Ghost, which yeah. if you haven't if you haven't watched the channel, Brian and I are big Gut Ghost guys. No, um, no, no. Yeah, just we didn't get it. Um, I know, like Mighty Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Um, you know, he'll he'll be mad at us about that because that's his uh, that's his big book. But uh, and, and you know, I mean, shout out to Enzo Garza, who's a good dude. Who uh, if I was going to speculate on Gut Ghost, I'd be going with like the Woe Comics. Um, self-published book for you know as the real first appearance. We've also seen the heavy metal magazine issue being on the hot ten list. But um, yeah, this you know what these books end up getting? They end up getting speculators buying them, then trying to pre-sell them to make profit, and then if they don't get their orders fulfilled, and they're getting um, if the book gets hot like Gut Ghost did. We had people on our Patreon who ended up getting canceled orders weeks later. Um, and now James Hake was honest. He said that he had to pack all of these books himself. Um, that he was there by himself putting together those gut ghost orders. That's a lot for a CEO to be doing. You know, you don't see too many CEOs that level of hands on. Yeah, he definitely he definitely grinds. Yeah, and that's why we said like this is not a shot at him. We like him. Um, I just don't love. He's an innovative businessman, and we're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about that in a second with uh, the caravan or Planet Caravan. 
Um, he's an innovative businessman. So I don't hate on him for, you know, trying to do something that's a little different and having web store exclusives for every book is a little different. But, you know, I think anytime there's reader buzz on a book, people are going to jump on that web store exclusive. Brian and I are looking at eBay before the show. We're seeing people pre pre pre-selling these at 35 plus shipping. Um, I ask you if you're buying this and paying $20 plus shipping and then you're selling it for say $35 plus media mail. And by the way, all of those listings had best offer options. So that means they'd probably take lower. So you're making, I mean, with the shipping you're paying four bucks, you know, you're making about $4 yeah. between PayPal, eBay fees, right? Is that worth it? And then remember what I said, what happened with gut ghost with our, some of our Patreon members getting those orders canceled. Um, $20 is a high buy-in. If I'm going to buy you a book for $20, I need like Adam Hughes, Gabriel Delato type cover artist that I can attach to that book. The, I will admit those two covers though are, are gorgeous. Yeah, and well, that's where I, I have a hard time almost speaking negatively about it because I think Scout does a good job with a lot of their books. A lot of their books are enjoyable reads. Um, you and I, Brian, are big Category Zero fans. So, you know, um, it's hard. And Headless is interesting. It's not a book Brian and I were big on, um, but it does have cover eight sales for $10. It, it is seemingly selling for 10 plus shipping and creeping up towards 15 yep. By the time this show airs, It'll probably be a solid $15 book. So if you were asking me, I know that the, the market tends to say, well, I want to speculate on the book with the lowest print run. It's one thing if it's an incentive. It's another thing when it's kind of artificially done by the publisher. Um, I would kind of rather buy that cheap buy-in cover price, headless number one, and flip it. Buy it for four, sell it for fifteen. Which, by the way, still you're you're still only making about four dollars on. It's not really worth the risk of damaged in shipping or customer returns or X Y Z could happen. Um, but the margins the same, or the margins larger on a percentage basis than the web store exclusive, and it's it's pretty pretty similar. If you're buying a buying at twenty dollars plus shipping, you're going to need this book to sell forty five dollars to make any sort of real money and, and you needed to sell briskly and that's tough. That's really tough to do. So, um, I don't love them. Now planet caravan comes from their binge line. You've heard us talk about their binge line. When we had James Hake on the channel, I'm, I'm a big advocate of their binge line. I think it's, it's a real unique way to release comics. Um, and what, what that is, is they release a number one traditionally. So you have this number one issue. And then all of the story will then come out in a trade paperback next. But I have to admit that while I like that with uh, Metal Shark Bro, I thought that that was a cool way to do things. The market hasn't necessarily agreed because Metal Shark Bro died as soon as that trade came out. And I've heard other publishers talk about the binge um, style and say that they don't want to copy that style because their fear is once issues aren't releasing – the, the total book will just die out and they think it's going to hurt their ability. Even if issues three, four, and five aren't selling, which is why James Hake made the decision to do this. And again, that's why I say the dude is an innovator. Whether this idea works or not, eventually he's going to come up with an idea that just changes comics. I believe that because he's he thinks like that. Um, I don't know if this is going to work for some of the reasons that other people said where it's if you don't have issues three, four, and five come out and you don't have that reader buzz, people are forgetting that that issue number one came out. And no one's talking about Metal Shark Bro anymore, even though that was an issue people liked and even though that was an issue people made money on. Um, and now that that issue has fallen all the way down. So Planet Caravan is a book that I looked at the solicitation and was like, man, this looks interesting. And I like the binge style. And um, I jumped on Metal Shark Bro. I got issue number one. I went and bought the trade to read. Enjoyed it. Um but yeah, I don't, I'm, now I kind of feel like uh, it, it's interesting. The school's kind of out. So again, Simpleman's Comics family, CBSI Nation, let us know in the chat. Let us know in the comment, comments. How do you feel about these binge releases? Do you like them? Are, they, is that, are you like me where maybe you think, well, as a reader, I want to get everything now, Netflix style? But at the same point, remember when we all watched that Netflix show, we wait a year for Stranger Things and then we watch it in a day. And the next day you're like, oh man, I don't have any more Stranger Things. 
you're in that show hole, as they say. Um, is that does that happen with comics? So, yeah, this is one I'm kind of. I don't know, but we're talking really. We're talking about these web store exclusives. I don't know that I love that. Let us know if you agree or disagree with us on that. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Right. <clears throat> Like I said, I, I do think those web exclusive covers are gorgeous. It's just I haven't yes. seen too many of them that have either risen in value or have held the value that they've risen to, put it that way. And, and we looked at Scout's website. Most are still in stock on Scout's website. Very few have sold out. So, I, I mean, if, for me, I've ordered some, but it's just for personal buy because I like the cover and the title. Especially with the Category Zero, I've ordered like two of their web exclusives. Or web exclusive, then they had a secret variant. But purely for collection. And that's actually a book I would love to see because it's such, it has such an X-Men feel. I think that's a book that a smart movie studio out there could get into the, the mutant game and compete. Not really compete with Marvel, but have an alternative to Marvel and pick up Category Zero. I'd love to see that. So that brings us to the end of the variant buzz section. Before we get into Jack's long-term play, I believe Jack has a giveaway tonight. Is that correct? I do. I do. What we're going to do is we're going to start a giveaway. And I want to start off by saying I want to thank everybody out there, um, everybody out there on Instagram and everybody right here on the Simple Wins Comics YouTube channel. Um, you know, I've been so focused on getting the comicbookinvest.com um, Instagram account up to uh, – the 10,000 mark so we can direct link. I admit I've kind of neglected the AKA Mr. Bolo account. At times I've even forgotten to put the Bolo list on my own Instagram and uh, people have to hit me up and say something about it. But I just crossed a milestone of 1,000 followers. And um, I want to say thank you uh, because again, I, I will be the first to admit I have not put the work into that account I need to. It is something I will be doing more in the future. There will be more exclusive bolos put on that Instagram account. There will be more content to that Instagram account. But I want to say a thank you to everybody who has already followed the account and to anybody who would like to follow the account. So I'm going to do a little contest and we're going to use our bolo boxes that um, we have at, for our Patreon members. Um, definitely check that out. Um, you know, we have that premium bolo box. Check out that hashtag bolo box on Instagram. We are talking about some serious heat in these boxes. And we will talk about after the long term play how those boxes are going to get even more full of heat. But. We are going to bring something new to the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. We are going to bring the back issue Bolo show where we are going to talk about different back issues that are moving on the secondary market or are, more importantly, are not moving yet but have reason to be spiking. And with that being said, as Brian said, I'm going to give away a back issue Bolo box right here on the channel. You have all week, all you've got to do is comment on the final video of this video with your Instagram name and be following the at AKA underscore Mr. Dot Bolo Instagram account. So if you're following the Instagram account and you, and, and you put your Instagram name in the comments so that I can verify that you're following the account, we will choose one winner at random and send you a back issue Bolo box. And I promise you, I am going to load that thing up with some serious, serious back issue heat because I am so appreciative of everybody who has followed that account, who has interacted with me on Instagram. Instagram and working with Brian on Instagram led me to YouTube, to working here, and um, Simpleman's Comics has become a, a true passion for me. Um, and I, I, I know it all stems from Instagram, so I want to send some love to the Instagram followers. So. Thank you. And this is open for – if you're already following me on Instagram, all you got to do is put your name. You're already in. Just put your name in the comments. And if you're not following me, jump on Instagram. Make sure you follow that account. And uh, that's all you got to do. You're in. Leave that name in the comments section. And um, we will announce next week who is getting that box. Yoy, yoy. So we have come to Jack's long-term play. Yeah. <laughs>
This is one book that we haven't talked about tonight, and we are talking about Ghost Spider number one. Yes. Now, it's my long-term play, but Brian, we actually have this one in common this week. Yeah. Um, this was your Simpleman's Comics Weekly Picks Pick of the Week, wasn't it? Yes, I actually had the Joe Casada variant as my Pick of the Week this week. Yes, which is my favorite cover of the three, and kind of homages with that water tower you see there. The water tower that was on the original Spider-Gwen number one, Heroes Con variant. That's a water tower from Charlotte, North Carolina. The book was created by um, Jason Latour, Rico Renzi of Charlotte, North Carolina, as well as Robbie Rodriguez. So as a resident of the area, um, seeing that kind of water tower in the background, it's a little different than the, than the water tower that's actually in Charlotte. But seeing that water tower in the background, I know that that's what Joe Casada was going for. Hits me right in the feels, so I love that. But um, we're talking speculation for this book. So where is the speculation for this book? Now, Brian and I both read this book. We both enjoyed it, but we're yeah, kind we of on the fence about it. Yeah, we weren't wowed by it, but I, I did enjoy yeah. it. I don't know if maybe I'm not wowed by it because I'm such a Jason Latour Spider-Gwen fan where maybe I haven't gotten to the point where um, Sean and McGuire, who's the writer now, I've maybe not given her that fair chance. But they keep changing things to Spider-Gwen. So we've seen the Chuck Taylors kind of get replaced with the almost ballet slippers. And now one of the biggest changes in this issue was the suit that she's wearing. It's no longer a hoodie. It's actually made of spiders. Um. Now, that's unique. Um, It was a big topic within the book. It leads into the ending where you see the jackal catch one of those spiders and kind of insinuate. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler (laughs) alert. And kind of insinuate that um, a pack of jackals will beat a pack of spiders. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But my reason for, for speculating on this book, honestly, in the cover that I think maybe bodes the best for speculation is actually cover a um and that is because you get to see miles peter and gwen cover together and look into the spider verse was a smash hit and we know there's going to be more gwen there but i think it just inevitably there's got to be a spider verse movie um we saw discussion of the multiverse opened up with far from home um Obviously, this is a weird timing week to be talking about Sony Marvel speculation because Sony and Disney had the kind of falling out over, you know, working together on the movies. It doesn't mean if you ever broken up with a girlfriend, sometimes you get back together. So it doesn't mean that uh, this is a forever no go. At least for Um, one night. I mean, one movie. Right. Exactly. Um, and, And, you know, before they get to another another spider-man movie i believe they're going to do what venom next so you know they could come back but regardless the spec on this for me is the fact that you gotta ask yourself when gwen hits the big screen she's not going to be spider gwen now as somebody who's been a fan since literally the day this character was created i took my kids to the edge of the spider verse number two autograph signing back before this book had really popped off and it was like the week it came out um i took my kids to the signing we got signed copies i actually got some cgc signed copies or actually i think it was cbcs back then um i got some cbcs signed copies um you know I, i've been on board with this from day one you will not meet a nicer person i talk about this again that's i tend to be fans of people that i genuinely like you will not meet a nicer person in comics than um jason latour every time my kids go to a comic convention he gives them signed prints he gives them uh stickers um the guy is just he he's an absolute treasure i feel like in the comics community um great dude but it's not just him robbie rodriguez rico renzi they're the same way so i've been a fan of this character since his character was created um mostly And I know I'll get crap from a certain crowd who will be like, uh, you know, oh, it's SJW or this, that, or stupid stuff. But look, the bottom line is my daughters 
got to see themselves as as Spider Gwen, which met was our Spider Man, which matters to me. Um, my kids have taken to this character like I haven't seen them take to any other character. And you know, when you're a father and you've got two daughters, and you're looking to connect with your kids on le- on some level, um, comic books have been a great way to do that. And it has given me a different perspective. Maybe if I didn't have two daughters, Jane Foster Thor would bother me the way it bothers some. Um, or maybe Spider Gwen wouldn't have the same appeal to me. But it, it does. I've literally read Spider Gwen comics to my kids before bedtime. Um, so it's been an important part of my household. And Spider Gwen is an important character in my household. My kid has been Spider Gwen for Halloween. Um, so I, I'm always going to be a fan i think it will always mean something to me but from a speculation standpoint living where i live and seeing how many people in this area also have that same feeling i felt very early on that this character was going to be something big i would see the cosplay of this character before there was any merchandise in stores um, I've seen the huge lines that Jason Latour and, and Rico Renzi and Robbie Rodriguez commanded at conventions when they weren't really known by the public yet. They, but people were on this book early on. When I, I was first getting into speculation hardcore at that period, I bought none at pre-order, but off different racks, upwards of 100 copies of that Edge of the Spider-Verse or two, because I just believed in it so much. And obviously that played out really well um so i've thanked jason multiple times for kind of kick-starting my cbsi now simpleman's comics career um and now it's not just a local thing anymore this is an internationally popular character at this point and i believe for many of the reasons i said because it there's a, a ton of young female comic book fans who get to see themselves as Spider-Man. And, and look, it's so crazy that you've got a pig dressed as Spider-Man with uh, Peter Porker. But, um, you know, I, I really believe in Spider-Gwen as a character. But she's not Spider-Gwen anymore. They've changed her name to Ghost Spider for whatever the reason. It, it wasn't a Jason Latour, Robbie Rodriguez, you know, Rico Renzi move. Those guys wrote their story, and they feel very good about passing this book off now. They didn't want to write it to the point that it, like, they kind of started to fall off. They told their story. They felt good about it. I, I covered the panel where they were ending the series at Heroes Con. Um, they kind of began it and ended it at Heroes Con. And... Um, Sean and McGuire has picked it up from there. And they've been really good about the changes that have been made and being accepting of that. And one of the big ones was Ghost Spider. Uh, and for whatever reason, that's the name Marvel decided they were going to go with. So the point that I'm making, I know I'm being a little long-winded, is that um, when this character eventually appears in a movie, she will not be Spider-Gwen. She will be Ghost Spider. So, yes, I think that Edge of the Spider-Verse number two is the main spec. Yes, I think that that very first Spider-Gwen number one is is great spec. But I think that Ghost Spider number one is going to have popularity for that reason. Because these new fans who are just now getting into her, they're going to only know her as Ghost Spider. Now, yes, there was another Ghost Spider series, but it was like... Gwen Stacy is Ghost Spider type thing. This is just Ghost Spider. This is what it is. And this is her in the 616. This is her interacting with Peter Parker. This is the depiction of her that I think we will see in movies. And I wouldn't be shocked if this whole spider suit thing, I guess, doesn't play into the movie version of Gwen in with this character. Um, you may remember there was an Endgame kind of teaser where Easter egg where there was a character that looks like it may have been Spider Gwen. Not we that may not come to fruition. That may have just been a cool Easter egg that the Russo brothers threw in there. But um, the bottom line is, since this character has been created, it's been nothing but money. It's been money for speculators. It's been money for the creators. It's been money for Marvel. Uh, we talk on this channel. I can't believe this is the first time I've said it on this episode. But follow the money. And Marvel has put money into this character. I think they will continue to put money into this character. And I think that these cover A's will be easy to get your hands on. And because of that, no, not a quick flip. 
but I have a good feeling enough to put it in this position that I think this is the long term play of the week. And again, the terminology of that is important. It is the long term play of the week. It's not something that you're going to make money on next week, um, next month, maybe even. But I do think there is going to come a time where especially with some of the events of this issue number one, where this book is going to have its day in the sun and it's going to be a book that people are going to want to get their hands on. And I don't think it's ordered as heavily as other spider books. So there we have it. That is Jack's long-term play for this week. And before we totally wrap this show up, we kind of hinted at the hot and cold show last night that we may or may not have an announcement tonight. But I think we should go ahead and make this announcement. Don't you think, Jack? Absolutely. I, I love the blurred image that you showed. But I've been excited to talk about this one for a couple days now. So let's, let's let them have it. Well, here's the thing. That, that image wasn't blurred. That's what the actual image is. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll say we open this show every time. This show does have a sponsor with Nick Dortmund from Slabbed Heroes. And then we also have the Hot and Cold, which is sponsored from CBSISwag.com, where you can get all your CBSI shirts and hats and hoodies and all the good stuff. But we have a new sponsor that is sponsoring the Weekly Picks video, but is also just a sponsor for the channel in general, right? Right, yeah. Definitely going to be the title sponsor for the Weekly Picks, but, you know... They're going above and beyond and the kind of a, a sponsor for the channel as a whole. So we will be working with them to do content with them uh, throughout the programming of the channel, without right. a doubt. So we'll just go ahead and announce it. We are proud to partner with Frankie's Comics, frankiescomics.com. We have been associated or friends or however you want to say it with Frankie since probably... Four or five years now since CBSI days. I know I've been buying books from him left and right. Um, a lot of those store exclusives. Um, what is it? The Batman Who Laughs variants. A lot of those Matina yes. variants that were coming from Frankie's. But Frankie's known to put out great exclusive variants. Correct? Right. Kevin Field's the owner of Frankie's Comics. He's a CBSI member. longtime CBSI member, as you mentioned. He's a guy that we've gotten to know. On top of that, the reason why they were such an attractive um, variant producer to bring in as a sponsor, we talk about store exclusives and the, the positives and the negatives. And, you know, I'm sure there's people who are going to say they love Frankie's. There's going to be people who say they hate them. But to give you kind of the true transparency of why they had that value for us is you mentioned the Batman Who Laughs stuff. Frankie's has produced so many variants that have had an effect on the secondary market that have sold out at retail and that have become really truly important books important spec books and we want to to represent a brand and have a brand affiliated with us that stays true to what we're trying to do with speculation um on top of that as far as collectors man talk about just some of the cool artwork that they've put out some of the stuff with matina and now we talk about Clayton crane being um you know, kind of a fan favorite, but they have a great working relationship with Clayton Crane. I've covered these guys um, for CBSI and for this channel. We did an interview with the owner, Kevin, um, for the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel at conventions. They're from Apex, North Carolina. They're up in my neck of the woods, um, a little closer to Carolina Chris's neck of the woods, um, but definitely a, a kind of a local uh, team. Kevin and his wife, they do an amazing job. And, and I've watched them grow their business over the last few years, and they do things the right way. Um, if you ever check out them at conventions, just excellent setup, excellent selection. They handle everything with gloves. They protect your books. Um, they are transparent with their print runs. Um, they are absolutely anal about releasing books in quality condition, um, and their communication is amazing. So I, this is just a great brand for us to be uh, associated and affiliated with. And I mentioned the Bolo boxes. Brian, this is going to put some heat in those Bolo boxes, isn't it? Yes. So, yeah, we're definitely working with Frankie's. And we're going to have some of Frankie's books coming into these uh, Bolo boxes, especially the premium Bolo boxes. But uh, 
excited to get hands on some of those and get these out to the, the Patreon, the people that support this channel. Like our, we have a Simple Man's Comics family, but then we have like the inner family where Simple Man's Comics family, we got the cousins and the aunts and the uncles, but these are the ones that we're talking about, the, the brothers and the sisters and the close-knit family and the, 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 the community of the community, and this is our way to help reward those people, especially for all the support that they give us. Yes, and we told you guys when we created these Bolo boxes, we didn't want to just be another mystery box producer. Um, there's a bunch of places where you can get mystery boxes that can help your reading out or can give you, you know, those, you know, fill in issues. Um, we didn't want to be a lottery type mystery box. We wanted to put quality books and heat in every single mystery box and being able to do that. Um, and again, I'm AKA Mr. Bolo. These boxes have my name on it. So it's important to me and being able to link with a brand like Frankie's and Kevin Fields and aiding and getting more heat in those boxes is just, it's right on brand with what we're trying to do. So shout out to Kevin Fields and his team. Uh, his wife is amazing. Frankie's Comics, um, they they do an amazing job and we are proud, proud to represent them and uh, to, to have them be affiliated with us on the channel. And in addition to the Premium Bolo Box, we also have a special Patreon member benefit for frankies but we're not going to put that in here that's for the patreon members and uh that's for them to use so we'll leave it at that but yes huge shout out to to kevin fields at frankies looking forward to this working relationship and starting this sunday weekly picks brought to you by frankies comics kind of rolls off the tongue pretty nice yes absolutely and that be sure to hit up frankiescomics.com too, where you can go and uh, pick up those books you're looking for from the weekly picks, for sure. Yes, definitely. And with that being said, that's going to be our show for tonight. Jack, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, again, check out that uh, Instagram contest. Um, be sure to drop your Instagram in the comment section. Be sure to follow the at aka underscore mr dot bolo account and again thank you to kevin fields and, and frankie's comics we are very excited about this and uh, we want to represent you guys right here on the channel right and i want to say thank you for everyone that's joining us in the live chat thank you for everyone that's watching on the replay thank you for everyone that's listening to this on the podcast version but it is now 2 a.m while we're recording this i have to be up in two and a half hours for work so with that, I'm going to say good night, good morning, however you want to say it, but so long. <laughs>